at an altitude of about 15 kilometers from the surface. With clenched jaws and anxious pauses. 300 meters off the surface of Mars. NASA scientists mesmerized as Perseverance hurtled towards Mars. 11 minutes after it happened, the signal reached Earth. Catch on confirmed. Perseverance safely on the surface of Mars. An exuberant moment that masks couldn't muffle. And so this is one step along the way of our journey to accomplish that goal, and it's a major step. Perseverance landed safely in an ancient river delta known for its steep cliffs and rocky surface, and quickly sent back the first images. Now the SUV-sized rover will collect samples of soil and sediments to answer the question, did life ever exist on Mars? That was intense. I, Chris I, Hurd I, is one I, of a I, number I, of Canadian researchers who will analyze samples collected from Mars. The key thing for us on the mission is to make sure we have the key set of, of samples. Most importantly, rocks that we think hold evidence for ancient life on the surface of Mars. Perseverance is NASA's largest and most advanced rover to land on the Red Planet. It features lasers, drills, HD video and microphones, even an autonomous helicopter. But unlocking the planet's secrets will take time. NASA will need to send another spacecraft to retrieve all that it collects. We've never tried to send something back from Mars before, and so we have to design a whole new architecture to be able to collect the samples. If all goes as planned, the collection from Mars will arrive on Earth in 2031. Scientists here say it's well worth the wait. It's not an understatement to say that those samples, once they get back to the Earth in 10 years, will revolutionize our understanding of Mars and, our, and the solar system generally. Now, NASA will focus on making sure Perseverance can complete its mission. Tashana Reed, CBC News, Toronto. It is a little hard to imagine the talent it takes to pull off a mission like that. Many hands, many sharp minds some of them Canadian. We spoke with three of those scientists about what it took and how it feels. Hi, my name is Aaron Gibbons. Richard Leve. My name is Tim Haltigan. I am the senior mission scientist in planetary exploration at the Canadian Space Agency. I'm excited to be part of the science team that will work with the Perseverance rover on Mars. I have the privilege of supporting the SuperCam instrument on board the rover, which uses lasers to identify the rocks and soils that most likely preserve fossils of ancient life. It's not just about the science that we're going to be doing in the next two years with this particular rover, but it's about what type of science are we going to be able to do 10, 20, 30 years from now. I'm excited about the prospect of possibly finding traces of ancient life on Mars and answering the age-old question, are we alone in the universe? Today's the story of dreams. I grew up on a farm in Saskatchewan, and every night I was able to go out and look up at the night sky and see this beautiful blanket of stars and always made me wonder what was out there and, and how we could study it. And for more on the Mars landing, we are joined now by CBC Science reporter Nicole Mortolaro. So, Nicole, what a huge day, but I, I'm so curious, why is this mission so different from the ones before? This is truly unprecedented. This is a massive scientific laboratory that is on the surface. Now, NASA started nice and slow in the beginning of exploration of Mars. It was rovers that were looking for past signs of water that might have existed. They found it. Then they were looking for past signs of habitability. They found it. And now Perseverance is there looking for signs of past life. So it will be looking for biosignatures hidden in the rocks in this delta that has never been explored before. Okay, so now the Perseverance has landed safely. We know that. What does it do next? Well, you know what? We're going to have to be a little patient uh, in the next few days. Well, first of all, tomorrow, hopefully, we'll see video of that descent, which was, you know, that seven minutes of terror. But then they're going to slowly unfurl the uh, scientific instruments, take a few steps forward and then a few steps backwards. And then there's going to be Ingenuity, the helicopter, which is going to be amazing. They're going to drive out to that site and do a test of uh, the helicopter. They do anticipate it could take about 40 days. And then in the spring, they're actually going to start their scientific mission. All right, Nicole, thank you so much.